Okay, so as you can see, we've got a rubber band on here, and that's doing that thing of lifting the wings up and hiding those joins down the side. Now we've glued the front, and we've got a bit of a clamp going on there just to pinch it in to hold that just in perfect alignment, really. So all we're gonna do now is get some liquid poly, and we're just gonna run it quite a generous amount from that leading wing root. I'm just gonna lay it right the way down and let it weld up. We're just gonna do the same on the other side. As I say, make sure it's a generous quantity. And that way it'll get in there and weld it up. Now, as long as it's all level, which it is, because we've checked it, we shouldn't have any problems on this join and we shouldn't have to do anything more to it. Now, if you have got a step, then that's obviously where you're gonna have various problems. Whoops. And you don't want that to happen either because you need to keep your pressure up there like that and to lift up. And then the other thing you can do also, if you get your sponge, okay, and just stick that on the top and because it's higher it'll lift it up so as we can see we're sort of like that you see and it's lifting it up and it's got those joins all together it's a bit tricky with the light on there um, but it's got those joins and they're all sorted out and fine so that's the last major thing now obviously we have got around the front here the wing roots are going to take some sanding and blending in because there's a little lip that runs all the way around there but we're going to do that the same way as we're going to take rid of all of those various bits and pieces so the other thing as well we can do is the tail. So we've got two options. Um, obviously it's a bit tricky because of the way we've got all this banded up and everything at the moment, but you can either literally just stick it on its end like this, get it all into a nice position, and then come along with your glue, drop in, or you could use a little bit of super glue, um, which is the way I'm going to do it. So we're just gonna take a bit of super glue, and we're just gonna put a join, one there, little bits on the side, on the bottom, take a cocktail stick and smear it just a little bit around because you don't want too much of a, a pull otherwise what happens is if we've got too much of a pull when we push it together it's all going to squash out the sides and look a bit horrible and all the rest of it so we've got that so we can just literally we're going to feed that in until we've got a very nice join and we're all happy this is our slower setting um, glue as well bring it out a bit there we go um, so what we can do, we can just sit this on here, line up all those panel lines um, and make sure we're all happy with how it all is. And then obviously we can just, if we do it like this, we can just spin it around a little bit and just have a look at the other side and see how the other side's doing. As I say, and roughly work it all in so you're all nicely level or as, as level as you can possibly make it. Okay, it might be worth picking a side you want to have as your best side, um, and then that way you can make that one perfect, and then obviously just on the other side you have to do a little bit of work, but we've got it like that now. Okay, the bottom bit to play a little bit of ball there, there we go. A squirt of kicker, that will get in there, you know, the capillary reaction of that will run around absolutely everywhere. I know it's slightly out of shot, which is a shame, but basically we've given a little bit of kicker just to speed things up and it'll help go. And then what we'll do, we'll just run a little bit of liquid poly around that joint as well, entirely on the tail, to just really bring that to, to bear and to sort of help weld it all up. So there we go, that's on there. So all we we'll do now, we'll come along, liquid poly, and as long as you've got plenty of it, you won't be affected by your super glue. There we go. And that will weld up any other little bits and pieces around there as well. Okay, so you can see we've got all the bands off. We're all pretty happy. I've added a little bit more glue um, in these wing roots to take care of them. Very happy with the finish and how it's all coming together. But obviously we have got this little join down the back here we need to lose. So no, that's not all painting up for masking and all the rest of it uh, for painting. It's actually, unfortunately, it's filler time. So what we've got is a bit of squadron green here. Never use the top bit that first comes out because it's always going to be dry and a bit horrible. But it's got a bit of card here. And we're just going to run a little band of it right the way round that entire area. I'm going to leave it overnight to completely go off and cure. And then we can come back and sand and fill again if it actually requires it. But if we fill in that gap completely, 
all the way around. Sorry, I'm not showing you very well, am I? Um, like so. And then that should give us plenty of scope to get in there. So don't be frightened of putting too much on because you've covered your area. What we'll do is we'll first of all, we'll sand that entire area with the, the tape on and then really we'll be taking that off to making it good. So just put a generous quantity on because we can really go to town and hack out if we've got anything too much. Now, as we've got a, a little bit left over, if you've got any little areas you think may need it, perhaps on the leading edges where it joins the, the gun area is one little area I'm just looking at just down in here. And certainly on the other side as well, it's gonna need a little bit. Okay, got a small little gap just on the top of the gun where we put that gun join on just on the top here. So we're just gonna give a little bit there. Other one's not so bad. And what I'm gonna do is just put a, a nice generous quantity right along the front at the top here. Because it's gonna be very straightforward to sand, but it'll just save a lot of extra sanding to get to a, a nice area. And obviously we've got this front part as well. All in. Okay. So we're just going to put that on there. Nice amount all along the front. So it'd be very, very easy to do. Have a look down on that front edge as well. And obviously, if you've got any little concerns about these parts underneath, I haven't on here. I must admit I'm okay. But if you have, now's the time to do them. So what I'm going to do is. I'm just going to put another little bit just under on this gun on the underside. There again, if you're not confident with how you do this, you can always mask it up to do it first. But if you are okay with your, your sanding around and all the rest of it, then you'll be okay to just to get in there and do it. So we've just got a tiny, tiny little bit just down in there. And there we go, we're all ready. So that now will sit, um, here we are in the evening, it will now sit and be all okay and ready for the morning to actually go round and take care of sanding it. And by leaving it a good sort of 12 hours to go off, we'll hopefully, um, it'll be totally, totally hard and very, very, very easy to get in there to do any work that we need to do. Okay, so here we are next morning. Um, Filler is all totally dry. It is the best way. The thing is, if you try and sand it when it's wet or you know it's dry on the surface, as soon as you get down to any that's area is quite thick, um, it just pulls and drags, and you end up thing. So the best thing is is to really let your filler dry for at least 12 hours, um, even if it's quite thin, um, and then that way it'll save you a lot of troubles. Otherwise, you will be just dragging it and clean out again. So what we're going to do, we've got a, a medium sort of file. As you can see, you can see it goes white straight away, we bring you in a little bit. And we're just not pushing down, let the file do the work. Just like so. And all you're really doing with this is taking off all the big stuff that probably isn't affecting anything whatsoever. Away and it will give you a bit of a look to see what you've got and then just tidy up those edges where you know down here we've got this one down this part here it uh, really isn't affecting anything at all it's nothing to do with joint it's just a little bit too much filler now you could do what we did on the tail here and just to do the areas and keep them all blended in but for an area like this it's not really worth the tape to mess around and do that with so literally we're just gonna get rid of all the big stuff so we're left with all the bits that are really what we need to do so that's it we're just going to blend that in a little bit there you go so there we are we're to this stage and then come along with quite a, a coarse sanding sponge and go over and then what you're doing you're looking to see where it's affecting it and where it's not obviously we've still got some down the side here 
that we need to get rid of because it's not anything to do with the joint but obviously in here it's working in the front here and certainly over this nose but try and keep your your sanding going across but also you're looking into it to see if it's actually you know what it is doing what is it actually working so there we go. okay so that's taken down so then you can come along with your other one and if you wet the area first you can literally polish it all in as you go and get rid of all the scratches and other marks that perhaps you've made and then just have a good look at what you got. That's really it, that's the secret. Now there is a few little lumps, bumps and joints um, where it joins down into the nose section here on the side. So we're just gonna get in there with our file. And because we're using these, you know, obviously these wooden um, sort of cardboard files, you don't have to worry about them being down on top of the other surface and cutting down perhaps you do with metal files. Um, so that's the reason why I quite like using them. So we're just gonna taper off those edges just like that in there again buff in with a file now same with leading edges of wings i know we've spoken about these before but you take your your medium type of file and just give them a good rub because what you'll get is actually a you can hear it there when my nail's catching it um, where the lower one is jutting out or the top one will be jutting out so we're just going to give them a bit of a sand to just blend them in and make them into one. Same thing with the coarse one, because the coarse one will take out all the big scratches that the file made. Okay, and remember, come in from the bottom and then in from the top, so you keep it nice and round, but because of it being a sponge, it will keep it nicely rounded off at the front. So there we go, that's just like that. And then obviously with your smoother one, wet it to help polish it and you should be good to go. And I've got a tiny little nick there where I cut the sprue just a little bit too close but what will probably happen, we'll go around with the acrylic like we do everywhere else and we'll do that point. So the other one is, is just down here, um, if I bring it here you can see it better, uh, it's this one just here. So because we're using these files which are thicker at one end and thinner at the other like that we can actually get into the, the actual area quite nicely. So we've got quite a rough one to start with, just to take off the really big stuff. Just like that. The camera having trouble focusing there again. Okay, there we go. And then we're just gonna come in over the top. Okay. And we're just gonna sand in that wing root just over the top bit. Okay, and then in with our thicker, coarser sponge. Just to get into that wing root. And what you can do, as obviously I've done with some of the others, if you get the sponges, um, they're hard plastic in the middle, it's a bit like a piece of styrene. Um, you can do little ones like this, and then that way they can get into nice little tight areas, such as wing roots as this one is. Now, as you can see, perhaps in here as well, the other thing as well, we've got a little bit, zip you in a bit here, we've got a little bit of the plastic where obviously I had the clamp on there and it's it's run around and welded around and various bits and pieces. So we're just gonna take a file to that just to take off all that excess glue. And to clean up inside that wing root. I know it's tricky for you to see, it's a bad angle really, because I need to get in there as much um, but there we go, let's just try and nicely. Okay, so then what we'll do, in with the big part, uh, sponge, sorry. I'm getting there as much as we can to clean that up and there we go so we do the same on the trailing edges as well just in case you get any glue poking out and obviously the same will go on the bottoms here and everywhere so the other major area is this join we've got at the back same thing keeping the file quite a coarse one leave the tape on don't take it off and we're just going to sand in 
around and you'll see it go white so you know you're in the right area okay and then we just work our way around taking it off all the way back down to the tape and then that way you know you're going to have probably about half a mil to sand through um, to make a nice join so we'll just work our way around there again this is one of those crucial things where it really needs to be dry if you don't you're going to waste your time and you're going to come along now there is other types of putty out there which dries very very quickly you can get light um, curing putties and all the rest of it um, and I must admit I've tried them all over the years but I tend to come back to sort of a standard type of putty rather than the gimmicky ones the gimmicky ones do work don't get me wrong the light curing one from Tamiya is very good but you do need a UV light or a nice sunny day to do it and it does leave a sort of waxy finish to the touch um, which is quite odd when you're sanding through because it tends to clog your, your sanding sticks quite a bit okay so we've got that to that point there we're going to come in now if we use our smaller little sanding stick that we cut down I'm just going to give it a rub and make sure we're down to that tape which we are Okay, just going to run around and as I say we're basically wearing through the tape now so it's all ready to come off because we are going to have to rescribe we are going to have to take care of it so let's just whip this off a moment And there we go, we're left with this bar of filler running down, probably about one mil. So we're gonna do very fine um, file, quite a wide-ish area of it as well. Okay, and we're just gonna lightly place it over and we're gonna sand and keep the file right over the top of the actual thing. Don't go to one side backwards and forwards because you're gonna make a step. But if you keep it right over the top and just push up, so you're covering the entire thing, you should find you'll get quite a nice join out of it. So there we go. We get to this type of stage. And that's in, so if I wet my finger, we can see it a bit clearer like that. So we've got it in there now. So we've got our sort of um, the finer sponge. So we're just gonna come along. There again, don't go right across, keep it on top of it. Okay, and just backwards and forwards and rub. Because you don't want to make a step. And if you go over it too far, you will make a step. So that's all we're going to do. And there we go. And that is... Get a bit of tissue here, clean up the area. And there we go, that is perfect. I can't feel it at all, and it's in there. And obviously we've still got, you know, the actual um, putty around, but certainly it makes for a very nice join. So hopefully when we come back and we paint it, it'll be totally invisible. Now I'm not gonna guarantee it's gonna be 100% invisible because very, very few joins, you will ever get them totally like it, but it certainly makes for a nice join. So we'll do exactly the same on the other side, on all the other joints as well, and then we'll get some acrylic paint on it. Okay, so there we go. That's all the filler work off and sanded down. Now what we wanna do is check all those nice seam lines. And as I've said before, you can use any color for doing this. So today I thought I'd use something a bit different. We're gonna go with brown. So this is just a plain, normal, standard acrylic brown. What are we, XF52, if you're interested. There's no reason why I picked it up. It's literally the first one out the top. Okay, so what we're gonna do, those little areas we had. So we've got this front area up here. Which obviously is going to need quite a bit because we want to check all those lines there. So that's going to go on there. I want to check those lines that we put the those two caps on both sides. I want to check the centre seam that runs up underneath and I also want to check the ones that go around the mouth, the actual intake. So we're just going to 
going to do that and we'll just do this other side. Because all this is doing is checking your your lines and your grooves. Okay, wing roots, we know they're very important. And also it will act as a filler. So that's why also we do do it. You know, some people use a, a Mr. Surfacer, various bits and pieces like that. Whereas I'll just do this. So we're gonna do the leading edges of the wings because there is a few little nicks and chunks and little dents in there that I know. So I can take care of those at the same time. There again, wing roots, put plenty in there. Don't be worried about filling it up. <clears throat> okay, this other one. So we'll just get it running down there. Okay, and then flip it over and then have a look on your underside where you want to put a few things. So I want to have plenty around this rear join as it went to the, the underside of the wing, join the top. Obviously I want to put plenty around the that band we did because it might need to have another go yet. So we're just going to run up because immediately you'll be able to see, um, even with a brush, what the join is like. And obviously the other thing this is doing, which is quite handy, although you don't think of it at the time, but because the filler is very porous and it will absorb the moisture, um, it will literally suck it up. Um, by doing giving it a coat or a couple of coats of acrylic like this, it'll actually stop it sucking your paint up quite as bad as it might do um, in those areas. So we're just going to check those joins we did on the wings like that. So obviously careful how you handle it. <clears throat> All right, the last thing we want to do is these um, wing roots where they, they join the actual aircraft, the tops of the wings up to the wing roots and around just like that. Because obviously we're going to sand all these back off, but you're probably going to leave a little bit behind. So we're basically like that. It's already drying as you can see on the top, but that is the important thing. Let it dry totally before you come at it. Um, don't think, right, okay, it's dry and I'll come and sand it because otherwise it'll be doing the same as your filler and that you'll notice that it actually won't, I'll stick my that up, that's it. Um, you'll find that it won't stay in the groove perhaps where you want it, it'll just lift out. But it's quite a warm day today, so that's not gonna take long to happen. Um, I'm quite happy with the way that's all going. We'll just put a little bit to there so we can check that. But we can have a good look at it then, a final look round, we can get the other bits all in there and then we can start getting some sort of primer and things. The next big thing we've got to do is the glass work, which there is a fault with it, which I'll talk to you in a moment. Okay, so there we go. This is all totally dry now. And just by looking at it, you can see if you're gonna have any big um, lumps and bumps and dents to take care of, um, just off the bat really. So what you can do, don't use too um, coarser sanding sponge, but if you use a sponge and that way it'll just mold itself around and you won't end up cutting in. But all you do is basically run over all of that paint that you brushed on by hand and you take it all back off. And then by looking down, obviously you'll see it in panel lines, you can see that it will fill small little cracks and gaps that you might have around your model, just like that. So there's that one. If I just show you again on this front part here, let's say nice big movements and give it a good sand away. And what it is, it'll just show you um, where perhaps you might need some more attention, where there's something going on, anything like that really. So we just go down. And then obviously you can come back time and time again if it's needed and just touch in these areas with a little bit more acrylic because obviously that will fill it up as you go over time. Or we just keep sanding away at it until that brown goes and you know you've gone through the plastic and then obviously there's going to be no gap or anything to worry about like that. But as long as you don't go overboard and you know with too strong um, a sand uh, sanding um, sponge or something like that, you'll be okay. Because obviously you don't want to be going along obliterating all your detail. Um, all we're trying to do here is just fill in any very small, minute little cracks, a bit like using Mr. Surfacer or something like that. And to really just check it all out and see how it all is. Because doing it this way, you can take care of it. Right now, you'd put on a bit more filler if you've still got gaps and lumps and bumps all over the place, and you can take care of it straight away. Whereas otherwise, if you'd waited until you've got your primer on, um, 
you've got your primer all over it, it's all looking nice, and then you've got to go around, and then obviously you'd have to sand into your primer, then reprime again, and all the rest of it. Where this way, it's quite straightforward, quite easy, just to do it right now. So I'll just get all the rest of this off. Okay, so I've just been running around um, and cleaning out and rescribing. I've rescribed obviously the lines down here um, using the P cutter and a template just down there. But we've got the curved ones now. Obviously, I've got my normal needle, um, which is literally a sewing needle in a pin vise. But obviously, I've got this other scriber as well, which is a bit thicker. Now, the reason I use this bigger, thicker one is because it doesn't like to make its own grooves, if you like. So it's quite handy for following other lines. So you can literally just whip along all the curved panel lines and it will clean them out and it will slightly deepen them as well. And the other beauty with this one is it's quite handy for doing rivets. So what we're doing, all those rivets that have been covered up and you know covered in yuck and all the rest of it, you can either wash them all out or you can do what I'm doing here, if I bring you in you can see, um, is literally just pushing gently and just squashing all that filler dust and paint and all the rest of it back in to make a nice new rivet hole. So we just work our way right the way along like that and then obviously you know we have to find our new ones to make the new ones to make it carry on. That's it. And then as soon as you'll get a little bit past because we masked up it's literally just going to be a bit of filler dust which is so you could wash out toothbrush is quite a good one an old toothbrush um, and just to flick out the filler dust but it's quite thing but the thing is if you don't re put the pins in the actual um, the rivet line as well it's going to look a bit odd because it's going to go along and look all nice and then it's going to stop dead and okay we're going to go over a camouflage pattern so it's not going to be as noticeable as it would be perhaps on a, a situation perhaps on a modern aircraft where it's just one color where it's just gray or something like that but certainly it will stand out so it does need to be done otherwise you are going to notice the band and it's another little thing where this will just disguise this line that we filled, you know, there's no panel line going to be running through it. It's just purely as is. So we need to hide it as best as we can. That's that. We've just got these little ones on the bottom. There's going to be three in here. Just remember, when you're pushing down onto where there's filler, just very gently. Don't push as hard as you would be if you were going onto plastic, because otherwise you will um, make too big a hole, and you'll be in a, a lot of trouble then, because you have to refill redo so when you're there just literally use half the pressure of what you've used before let's work our way along like those okay now we just do this one down here so i'm just going to finish off do cleaning out all these rivets and like up here as you can see around this top bit it's full of yuck so we're just going to run it around and as you see it just scrapes it all out and because it's not quite as sharp as the others it won't be making its own one and if you do jump out the panel line inverting her uh, inadvertently it won't end up scraping out your plastic and things like that but it's very handy for doing curved things like that and obviously in on your wings make sure you get those all out and then this line down here what we'll do is we're going to rescribe a nice little panel line very neat just to disguise that line totally as well so we're just going to do all these and we get these all cleaned out and all sorted out. 